Hey brother! Then a couple of weeks ago I made a video about how Mickey Mouse saved Disney. But did you know that Disney actually has a second, far less celebrated mouse rescuer? What's funny is that I'm talking about two Disney mice rescuers and neither of them are the two mice stars of Disney's The Rescuers. But so who are we talking about? Well, that requires a bit of a story. Way back in 1985, Disney released a movie called The Black Cauldron. And while it would go on to be something of a cult classic, seriously, I cannot tell you how many of you guys thought Princess I. Louis Al Ilwini? Al Ilwini? Should have been part of the top five snub Disney princess list. And perhaps she should have been, but the reason she definitely isn't a Disney princess is because the Black Cauldron did not do so well at the box office. In fact, it really stunk. It cost 44 million to make and only earned 21 million. And it took forever to make. Pre-production started in 1973, and if you do some quick math, that means it took 12 years before it hit theaters. Now, to be fair, there was like a limbo period in there where they just stopped working on it, but still. This movie, which again has become a cult classic and I'm sure many of you like, performed so poorly when it came out that it almost ended Walt Disney animation. Which is not a great legacy to have, but to be fair, it wasn't entirely the Black Cauldron's fault. The Black Cauldron was just the inevitable end result of a pattern of poor decisions by management at Disney after the death of its founder, Walt, in 1966. So here's how it works. All of the movies made while Walt Disney was alive, starting in 1937 with Snow White, make up what is known as the golden age of Disney animation. This golden age time period from 1937 to 1966 includes pretty much all of the Disney classics. Bambi, Pinocchio, Dumbo, Alice in Wonderland, Cinderella, 101 Dalmatians, Peter Pan, and ended just after Walt's death with The Jungle Book. But what happened after that? Well, I'm sure most of you are at least familiar with the phrase Disney Renaissance, which started in the early 90s. But Here's the thing, you can't have a renaissance unless you first had a dark age. And that is exactly what happened after Walt died. And that's actually what it's called. The movies that came out during this time period are literally called the Dark Age of Disney. Or more politely, but no less passive aggressive, the Bronze Age of Disney. Bronze, yeah, that's nice. You may as well just call it the Participation Award era. But with that in mind, prepare to get extremely defensive because I'm willing to bet that you have very fond memories of at least a few of the movies that came out during the Dark Age, which are The Aristocats, Robin Hood, Winnie the Pooh, The Rescuers, The Fox and the Hound, and, of course, The Black Cauldron. Worst of the worst, am I right? No, they aren't, and like I said, people tend to have pretty soft spots for some of these movies, and actually, most of them did pretty well at the box office. But the real issue with these movies, and the reason they did well at the box office, is because... That's all they were designed to do. Get kids into the theater, throw just enough money at the project to get a couple of flashy songs, some cute characters, some good voice actors, and a little bit of action. Like, all you need to have a good trailer. But what they don't feature is a lot in the way of great writing or storytelling or innovations in animation. It's a low-cost, high-reward business model, which is, you know, great if you're, I don't know, a sunglass company, but not so great if you're a movie studio. Seriously, $200 for a pair of sunglasses? It's just plastic. For movies, especially hand-drawn animation, it's really just not a sustainable model. One, because eventually the viewers are going to just realize that the movies you're making are only okay. And two, because in order to make a hand-drawn animated movie, you need a lot of very specifically talented and creative people and a lot of time. If you're gonna hire people to work on a movie and draw the same character over and over and over for years, they are going to want that finished product to be really high quality. But when management continues to throw less and less money at their animated projects, people eventually start to pick up on what's happening. And this is what became clear to a man named Don Bluth, who was particularly qualified to notice the massive culture shift at Disney Animation. After Don had graduated high school, he immediately 
got a job at Disney helping work on Sleeping Beauty. This is a time when Walt Disney was still alive. After that, he took some time for himself, traveled the world, but eventually made his way back to Disney after Walt's death and discovered things were not as he had remembered. He did help produce some of the movies that came out during the Dark Age, but overall was unhappy with the quality of work coming out of Disney. He tried to make some changes from within, but when he was unsuccessful in 1979, he just left and brought with him 16 of Disney's animators to start their own company. These Bluthers were determined to fight for the art of animation, and indeed, just three years later, they produced an animated masterpiece, The Secret of Nim, which Yes, was a box office failure, but it was very highly critically acclaimed and showed just how unimpressive the work coming out of Disney was. And speaking of Disney, that's also when they came out with The Black Cauldron, which brings us back to the beginning of our story. That means in a short amount of time, Disney had lost a large chunk of its animators, they had seen what the competition could do, and they had just flopped big time with The Black Cauldron, so their backs were kind of against the wall. They needed a hero. They they needed a mouse. They needed Basil of Baker Street, the great mouse detective. Oh man, if you were not familiar with the movie The Great Mouse Detective, I highly recommend you go check it out. I mean, it's basically Sherlock as a mouse. Need I say more? The movie is a complete departure from what Disney had been doing. It has a much darker tone, and because of budget restraints, they were forced to cut the movie down to 76 minutes, which normally would probably be considered a bad thing, but it forced them to make every scene count. As a result, the pacing is rapid, but the movie doesn't really suffer. Each scene is entertaining and moves along the plot, which is still pretty easy to follow. And for The Great Mouse Detective, they made sure to advertise their new animation innovation computer graphics Yay! specifically the clockwork gears inside of Big Ben during the climactic final battle and the cherry on top of everything else is the performance of the main hero and villain Basil voiced by Barry Ingram and Radigan voiced by Vincent Price Basil is an enthusiastic genius detective whose ego is both his greatest strength and weakness. And Radigan is a criminal mastermind who is equally egotistical and just loves being, in his own words, nasty. All that combined for success. With just a $14 million budget, The Great Mouse Detective raked in $38.7 million and saved Disney. Weirdly though, it wasn't even the highest grossing animated movie about a mouse that came out that year. Don Bluth had released with Steven Spielberg an American Tale, which with a budget of $9 million managed to rake in $84 million, so that's pretty good. In fact, it meant Bluth had taken the lead and he only increased it with his next movie, The Land Before Time, which absolutely trounced Oliver and Company, the final film of the Disney Dark Age. And so there it was. The stage was set. Bluth had taken the lead. He could become the master of the animation world. Except Disney had taken the hint and they sought to correct their mistakes. So with the money earned from The Great Mouse Detective, they produced, wait for it, the Little Mermaid. And thus, the Disney Renaissance was born, and the notion that anyone else would rule the animation landscape was crushed. Why do people love animated mice so much? I mean, like, when you see them on screen, you're like, oh, that's so cute. But if you see a mouse in real life, it's like, burn it with fire. Now, my question for you and everyone else is, one, have you seen The Great Mouse Detective? And two, how much did you love it? And three, which of the Disney Dark Age movies is your favorite? Let me know in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing. As thanks for watching, as always, please remember to like this video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos about the history of Disney. If you want to see how Mickey Mouse saved Disney and why he's actually Kevin from Up, you can check out this video right here. And if you want to see the weird backstory between ants and a bug's life, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.